Peace be with you, brothers and sisters. Let us prepare our hearts to come before our Lord today. Let us now rise and we sing praises to him in our hearts with the opening hymn. Brothers and sisters, Apostle John at his revelation, in his vision, he sees the heaven and the four living creatures here. And in the Bible says, the scripture says in this chapter 4 verse 8, it says, and the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within. And day and night, they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. It's very clear that all these living creatures, they are non-stop praising and worshipping our Lord here. Yeah. So, brothers and sisters, as the psalmist says in the Psalm 134, 
verse 2, it says, Lift up your hands in the holy place and praise the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, let's come together, lift our hands and our hearts, and sing praise to our Lord. Let's just pray. Just praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let us lift our hearts to heaven and praise the Lord. Let us praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let us lift our hearts to heaven and praise the Lord. Let us praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us lift our hearts to heaven and praise the Lord. and sisters, we have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer Him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive His holy word, to bring before Him the needs of the world, to ask His forgiveness of our sins, and to seek His grace that through His Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to His service. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please take your seats as we allow the Spirit to search our hearts. Let us confess our sins to the Almighty God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we sin against you and against our fellow men, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that I may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen.
receive God's forgiveness. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As people forgiven by God, let us stand and respond to him with these words. Open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let us worship the Lord, or praise to his name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 125. Psalm 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forevermore. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous stretch out their hands to do wrong. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are upright in their hearts. But those who turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord will lead away with evildoers. Peace be upon Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Please be seated. We'll now have the scripture reading by Sister Priscilla. Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 25. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbour, for we are members of one, another, one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labour, doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamour and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, as God and Christ forgave you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What a privilege and joy to gather together as God's people, both on site in this century and also all those gathered online. It's good to be back to minister God's word with you today and also to fellowship together in Christ. Thank you, church, brothers and sisters in Christ, for the last few weeks, for your prayers, for your care and concern during those period of time when I needed uh, a rest, uh, physically, emotionally, and mentally. So thank you, Church, for your love, care, and prayers. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, minister deeply in our hearts today as we received your word. We thank you for Jesus your beloved Son, dear Father, who sacrificed on the cross, brought forgiveness of our sins, and your gift of eternal life, meaningful, abundant life in Jesus. 
and transforming our hearts more and more to be like Jesus day by day. So Lord, as we receive your word, Lord, I pray for your spirit to speak to our hearts clearly today. And for those in our midst struggling in some way, body, mind and spirit, or in family, or at work, or concerning our parents who are unwell, Father, may we find in you our refuge and our strength. Lord, may we find in you every grace that is sufficient, every peace that is comforting. Thank you, Father, for being, having, Lord, for us having the privilege to be your sons and daughters. We bless you, indeed, we praise your holy name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. There was a frontier settlement in the mountainous west, and in that area, people were engaged in a forest, tree, lock, wood, lumbering business. And in the mountainous west, in that settlement, there was a small town. And in that town, the people gathered and they discussed and thought of having a church. So they built a church building and they sourced and looked for a pastor. They managed to find one. The pastor was very well received. The pastor wanted to know his flock better. So one day he visited some of his church members at work by the river. And he saw them pulling in huge wooden logs that had floated down the river. And these logs, however, belonged to another village upstream. Each lock was marked with the owner's stamp on one end. The pastor observed his members at work, and to his great distress, he saw his church members pulling in the tree locks and sawing off the end of the lock, clearly marked with a clear red ink of the owner. So he decided the coming Sunday to prepare a sermon on the eighth commandment, you shall not steal. He preached, and after service, the people lined up, congratulated the pastor, wonderful message, pastor, mighty, fine, preaching, pastor. The following week, the pastor decided to go back to the river to observe again his parishioners. Sadly, he saw them continuing their practice of stealing logs that belonged to another village. This really troubled him a lot. He went home, worked on another sermon, this time a bit more forcefully, for the coming Sunday. And this time, he adjusted his sermon topic to, You shall not cut off the end of your neighbor's lock. <laughs> Well, as you might expect, no one mentioned about his sermon after the service. The only thing is, sadly, in the week ahead, he received a letter of termination from the church board. Today, we shall look at commandment number eight. I thank my brother, the canon Ichingwa, for helping with preaching on commandment number six and seven. And today we continue with sermon number, uh, or rather commandment number eight, you shall not steal, Exodus 20, 15. Now what is stealing? Stealing is to take another person's property without permission or legal right, without intending to return the item. Now you might be interested to know that when Israel entered the promised land of Canaan, one of the first sins recorded for us is the sin committed by this person called Achan or Achan, no matter how you pronounce it, Achan, Achan, stole silver and gold recorded for us in Joshua chapter 7. And then in the New Testament, after the church was formed, after the day of Pentecost, one of the sins recorded for us is the sin by Ananias and Sapphira, where they withheld the proceeds of sales of property, ironically their own property, but they withheld 
some of the proceeds. Acts chapter 5. Now we may wonder, my dear friends, why? Why is stealing a sin against God? There are many factors to consider, but today I'd like to share three. Firstly, stealing dishonors the name of the Lord. Stealing dishonors the Lord's name. So if you look at your Bible in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 7 to 9, this is what is written. Two things I ask of you, deny them not to me before I die. Firstly, remove far from me falsehood and lying. And secondly, give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that is need, need, needful for me, lest I be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and still and profane the name of, the, of my God. You see, my friends, Israel was called to be a light to the nations. They were to be a people consecrated, set apart for God to live a life of holiness. The God who called them to be, to be his beloved people, their covenant God, the God who said, be holy for I, your God, am holy. But if the people of God, the chosen people of God, if they steal, they profane the name of God. What does it mean? It means to render disrespect a lack of reverence to break the terms of God's covenant with them, to bring dishonor to God's holy name, whose name is holy. Be holy, for I, your God, am holy. So my dear brothers and sisters, for you and I, who are believers, followers of Jesus Christ, you and I who are called to be sons and daughters of our mighty God, a loving Father. We bear the name of Christ. We are Christians. We bear the name of Abba Father as his children. So if we still, we dishonor the name of God. In fact, we are called to be his witnesses. We are called to be a good testimony for Jesus wherever he has placed us. Second, stealing is a sin against God because it is an unloving act against your neighbor. In Leviticus 19, verses 9 to 18, God again reiterate his commands to Israel, what it means to love your neighbor, and among which is not to steal your neighbor's property. And in verse 18 of Leviticus 19, all this is because God calls his people that you shall love your neighbor as yourself, because God says, I am the Lord. And in the New Testament, Matthew 19, verses 18 and 19, the rich young man who came to see Jesus. What does it mean to want to be able to gain eternal life? And Jesus said to this rich young man, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You see, my friends, stealing does harm to one's neighbor by taking away what rightfully belongs to our neighbor. Stealing results in hurt, in pain, in loss, in suffering, in disadvantage towards the one whose things have been stolen towards the one who had worked hard and all the benefits of his hard work are gone just like that because someone had taken it away. So you can imagine during the time in ancient Israel, you can imagine the Israelite farmer working hard to buy another ox to plow the ground and here comes along his, 
neighbor or someone else who come to take and steal this ox away from him. All his hard work to raise the money to buy this extra ox is all gone. Taken away to another place to plow the land or even to make oxtail soup, beef steak, you know, sell to Jack's place or whatever. The ox is gone. So when we steal, it does harm to our neighbor. It is a very unloving act. It causes pain, suffering, loss, disadvantage. Thirdly, stealing is a sin against God as it reveals the depravity of our heart. It reveals the depravity of our human heart in need of forgiveness in Christ. Jesus said in Matthew 15, 18 to 20, For what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, stealing, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. The prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 17 verses 9 to 11 had these words from God for Israel. The heart is deceitful above all else and desperately sick. Who can understand it? And God say, I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Like the patriarch, the bird that, that gathers a brood that he did not hatch, so is he who gets riches, but not by justice. One who gets rich, but not in a just, fair way. God knows the human heart. God knows our human heart. Deceitful above all else and desperately sick. A human heart marked by sin, depraved, defiled, deceitful. You see, to steal is deceitfulness. But thanks be to God for Jesus. Only by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of Christ's death on the cross can we be rescued from this defilement, deceitfulness, depravity of our human heart. At the cross, we find rescue, restoration, redemption, a renewal of our human heart. So my dear friends, Stealing is a sin against God because firstly, it dishonors the name of the Lord. If we call ourselves Christians, when we steal, we dishonor His name. Second, it is a, such an unloving act towards our neighbor. And third, it reveals the depravity of our human heart. Now we wonder, what are some possible reasons why people steal? There are many, but I'll just mention three today. The first possible reason, which might apply to many situations, is covetousness. And that's what happened to Achan in Joshua chapter 7, and in particular, verse 20 and 21. And we read, and Achan answered, Joshua, Joshua being the leader of Israel at that time. And Achan answered Joshua, Truly, truly I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And this is what I did. When I saw among the spoil, the spoil of war, a beautiful cloak from Shina, and 200 shekels of silver, and a bar of gold weighing 50 shekels, then I coveted them and I took them. So oftentimes, stealing happens when one covets our neighbor's belongings, items, property, or anything that is around us, that deep in our heart there is covetousness. 
more of this uh, in two weeks' time when I cover the final and tenth commandment, what it means not to covet. But covetousness is something you and I need to watch our heart. Second is laziness. And in the text that our sister uh, Priscilla had read earlier in Ephesians chapter 4, and in verse 28, the Apostle Paul had told the church at Ephesus, let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him work, let him labor. Let him go and work. Let him work hard to earn income for daily living so that he will not need to steal anymore. And a third possible reason is poverty. And in a text I read earlier in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 9, the writer of Proverbs had written, Lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. But of course we may wonder and ask, Hey, what if the stealing was for survival, was for the sake of the family? I think mentally and emotionally we may think, Hey, perhaps it may be all right. But then if we think deeper, it still causes hurt to the one whose things are being stolen, hence still morally wrong, although they are real, real needs. That's why in a while we shall see that how to help situations of poverty where the practical help of the community is so important, especially the church. And we see that quite often practice in the book of Acts, where the people of God, the church, gathered to help those who are in real need. So perhaps, my dear friends, you may know of someone, especially during this very challenging COVID-19 year, who might be really struggling. And God may have placed the person's name in your mind, that we can come alongside him or her and their family to help them in the midst of their struggle, how they can overcome together. What then, my friends, is the biblical solution to stealing? I tell our attention to Ephesians chapter 4. You can turn your Bibles to that chapter again. When I read... Now the full verse in verse 28, Ephesians 4. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. So there are three things that must be done. Firstly, repent. Repent. Let the thief no longer steal. He must stop what he has been doing in the acts of stealing. In Ephesians 4.22, Paul encouraged the believers in Jesus Christ to put off, to put off their old self, their former way of life, uh, their former way of life where whose heart is full of deceitful desires. So Paul's instruction for those who continue the act of stealing, even though they have come to be believers in Jesus Christ in the church at Ephesus, let the thief no longer steal. To repent, what does it mean? To repent, of course, is to ask God for forgiveness. To repent is also to turn around, to stop the wrong action. Second is to work. To work. Paul says here, verse 28, let him labor doing honest work with his own hands. So when we consider repentance to put off the old self, to work then is what is said in verse 24, to put on the new self. This new self in Christ created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So the thief must no longer steal. Instead, they must labor. They must work hard, work honestly with their own hands. Not no longer lazy, no longer taking what belongs to others, but to work hard. 
And then the third aspect of this process of overcoming this sin of stealing, to repent, to work hard, and then to learn to give. So you see, on the one hand, in the past, before the person, you know, is in Christ, sin, sinning against God and sting, but now going to the other end of the situation, instead of taking from others what does not belong to him, now, as he honestly works, he has the, the means, the finances to be able to give to others what belongs to him, but now giving it to others to share so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. So Paul is telling the church in Ephesus, you are now a community of God. You are now the body of Christ. Learn to share your resources together, especially helping the poor. And I was saying in those days, there were many who were poor. So this generosity, this kindness to the poor and needy is ever so important. And as you read in other parts of Scripture in the New Testament, especially the poor and needy includes the widows, the orphans that are in need. In fact, when James wrote to the, to the church throughout the world, what is pure religion? Pure religion, one of it is to be kind and helping the widows and orphans so that they do not have to steal to survive or feed their family so that they can have the means having shared resources to help one another. During this time of COVID, you may have friends either in church or among your own contacts who have been retrenched, very difficult to find a job, perhaps struggling in some way. I pray as God enables you and God brings such of these friends, even family, extended family along our way, that God in His gracious provision for us can also cause us to be helping coming alongside as a community. You know, nothing more dramatically demonstrates radical change in a person, in his conversion to Christ, in their faith in Christ, in the transformation of the heart in the life of a sinner, than that change of a person who was formerly a thief, or known to be a thief, but now able to share, able to give, able to be generous, and working hard with their own hands. The biblical solution, repentance, hard work, and to be able to share and give and build community life together. For the next few moments, I'd like to share some reflection as I think about the areas in our life, some examples, so to speak, of stealing uh, circumstances that we may have I have known about or we may have seen in our life growing up, some reflection on some examples of stealing. And I've listed them in six categories. And as I go along, just consider and think about it. Does it apply in your life or my life? First of all, physical property. Physical property. So for example, I can think of those who, who, who go on planes, you know, take uh, air trips, air flights and all this. Of course, now we, we can't fly, hopefully soon, yeah, in the next one, two years when things stabilize. That what can happen when one takes a plane where, where this area of stealing is concerned? Perhaps, you know, forgetting to to leave the cutlery on the tray and then con conveniently let the cutlery drop into our bag. You know, the, maybe the SQ cutlery is nice or maybe <laughs> the cushion. I don't know. I don't know who anyone the, you observe on the plane who may have pack, pack the blanket and put into their luggage. <laughs> blanket is pretty big though. How about the hotel that we may stay towers, you know, in the hotel? 
two young friends were uh, having a sleepover at one of the friend's house. And this friend asked, uh, uh, asked the friend or no, that they, uh, visited the friend and, Hey, is your, is your mother's name Marriott? And then the friend said, Oh, how come you ask such an interesting question? Oh, I don't know. When I was in the toilet, I saw a lot of towers with the print Marriott. So I thought your mom's name was Marriott, you know, as in Marriott Hotel. So physical property can be stolen. How about financial? Financial property. And here I'm thinking about income tax. Income tax. Under declaration of income or an over declaration of expenses that perhaps in the declaration of expenses we have taken personal expenses and taking it as business expenses, expenses so that we can pay less tax. Or receiving excess money changed when we buy things and then not returning to the cashier. Or the cashier may miss out keying an item at NTUC. Or when you have a house renovation bill or you know some big items. An item that was missed out in the invoice to us. Office property. Office supplies. Stationery. Pens, clips or whatever from the office they ended up in our home even copier printing paper you know during this period of working from home for our church staff and uh, realized there are things that that need to be printed from home so one day i realized i need a printer paper at home to print sermon whatever and whatever that is needed and i can realize mm, maybe i'll just I will need a ream of paper, but I told myself I cannot just take a ream of paper from the office. I need to check with my administrator. And then I told myself, no, I need to pay for it. So I asked Doris, how much are we paying for this, you know, ream of paper to our supplier? We calculate, okay, I need a ream of paper at home because it may end up printing some personal things for the family as well. I told myself, no, I need to pay for it. Did the calculation and paid and brought home the paper. COVID-19 work from home. It is tough initially working from home. And one of the issues is the big issue of time. How do we use the time at home to find a good balance between rest and work? We might end up with two extremes. Either we overwork or we may underwork. So my dear brothers and sisters, as we work from home, May God grant us the wisdom and the grace to know how to manage time well, to be good stewards, to be responsible for what we are needing to be accountable for to our, uh, to our office and our bosses. Next, I consider things about intellectual property. Perhaps at work, we may come across an idea and a proposal by a colleague. Do we then, when we discuss the project in the team, claim that it is our own? Or the issue of copyright. We think of computer software, we think of music, songs, movies, books, and so, of, so forth. What is our attitude towards them? Earlier this year, someone sent me a spiritual resource, an e-copy. I was excited about it, and then I sent it out to, to the cell leaders to use. And then one of the church, when one of our church members very kindly, gently texted me, Hey, Pastor, this spiritual resource that you just sent out to everyone, do you know that it is on sale in one of the, <laughs> the publisher of this, uh, this particular booklet? I said, Oh dear, I'm sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> it is really my fault to just send it out to everybody. I just was just hoping everyone could just read that resource. Then I realized, yeah, check the website, it's really on sale and i had to send another text to the cell leader say hey guys hold on hold on hold on <laughs> whoever wants to download that particular ebook perhaps can consider uh, a contribution yeah because it will then affect the income of this e uh, uh, electronic resource even the songs that we sing church do you realize that our church is paying uh, a license for in fact we are now paying 
two companies for licenses for the songs that we sing. Before COVID, we just paid for one because we could sing and use. But then now during this period of COVID, we have to end up paying for another one because now we got to use it for our online uh, services. So church, as a church, we also need to be honourable in giving due uh, uh, financial uh, what I call it, compensation for those that work hard in written, in writing the songs. Fifthly, in the area of academic property, that when we write research papers, for example, we might need to remember to credit our sources. The issue of plagiarism is real at times to copy the work of another person as if our own. And then finally, very interestingly, I came across this text in the Bible about human property. About human property. Do you know you can steal people to steal another fellow human being? So you look at Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 7. There's an instruction from God. It says, If a man is found stealing one of his brothers of the people of Israel, and if he treats him as a slave or sells him, then that thief shall die. Really serious. So you shall purge the evil from your midst. Of course, this is a very real problem in the world right now, as we know. Many serious cases of human trafficking, especially in many, many poor countries. And as you read the reports, you can really feel so painful about the whole situation. But how about for us in Singapore? How will, do we treat the foreign domestic workers in our midst? How will, do we treat the migrant workers in the sense? Do we underpay them? Do we withhold their wages? Or do we overwork them? And we know recently there's this uh, quite a well-known court case by now. Uh, yeah, about, you know, overworking those that we employ. In a sense, it is stealing. Do we hold what is due to the worker? Poaching. In the business world, poaching of key stuff from our competitors. Once in a while, you read in business time, certain situation is also a form of stealing. And you know, as a pastor, we also need to be careful. And I, as I was mentored as a young pastor, I'm often reminded, John, remember, we do not steal sheep from another church. That means if I know of someone in another church that I meet along the way, oh, yeah, in this church, hey, why don't you, you know, come to my church? My church seems to be the better church. You can leave your church. Or, as a matter of principle, as a pastor, if I know there's a very good pastoral staff in another Anglican parish or another church, as long as a person continues to serve in that church, I will not ask the person to leave their church, to come and work in our church, because it is wrong. It is a form of stealing human property, so to speak. And I can go on down the list, Perhaps there are situations we ourselves have, may know or experience or in some way. But as I conclude, my dear friends, as I conclude, I'd like to remind us in the Bible, there is a principle of restitution. A principle of restitution to return. Exodus 22 verse 1, If a man steals an ox or a sheep, and kills it or sells it, he shall repay five oxen for one ox. Or if it's a sheep, to repay four sheep for one sheep. Of course, some people commented this, ask, how come for ox you repay five, but for a sheep you only repay four? Why not the same? Well, they think that ox is a bit more valuable. Uh -huh. You know, the ox you need it to <laughs> plow the land. Perhaps more, more useful in terms of a financial a uh, uh, benefit. Restitution. In the New Testament, it is recorded for us how Jesus ministered to Zacchaeus, the tax collector, in Luke chapter 19. And after Jesus went into the home of Zacchaeus, that kind of restoration for him as a son of Abraham, as a son of God, and in his change, in his conversion, in the transformation of his heart, Zacchaeus decided to make restitution. 
that to all those that he had cheated of their tax, he said he will pay back four times. And he said half his possessions he will give to the poor. In a sense, having met Jesus, encountered Christ, a heart transformed. Something needs to be done for what he had done in the past. So as I share and close this particular topic, as the Spirit of God brings to mind, perhaps if there is, if there is to any one of us in our area, is there, is there any area that we may need to make restitution towards someone if we have wronged them in the past? I close with a comment from a Bible commentator about the nature of stealing. I quote, Stealing is an act that is completely contrary to the character of God. Perhaps the reason why God hates stealing so much is that it is a crime that completely contradicts God's character. God is gracious, the thief is greedy. God gives, the thief takes. God responds to the cries of the needy, the thief unkindly creates needs and tragedy to the one whose things are stolen. Nothing could be more contrary to the graciousness of God than the cruelty of the thief. Unquote. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us obey God's command not to steal because we honour the name of the Lord because we love our neighbor as ourselves. And now in Christ, you and I, rescued, restored, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, we have a transformed heart. And then having this transformed heart, putting off our old self, putting on our new self, we may have the courage, the wisdom, the grace to live a life holy, set apart before God to be his good witness to all those around us. Let us pray. So Father, we ask Lord for your grace to guard our heart day by day, that even in the little, little things of life, Lord, that do not belong to us, Lord, we pray for grace not to take what belongs, what does not belong to us. But Father, we pray, God, as your Spirit to speak to our hearts uh, today. Lord, if there's any area, Father, that we need to make restitution in the past that we have done wrong, Lord, grant us the courage to do so. So we pray, Father, as a community, Lord, we learn to share, help, look out for one another, especially for those who are in need, Lord, as your children, to be able to help one another in our life, especially during such challenging times. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, God. Help us, Lord, to honour you, to love our neighbour. And thank you, Lord, for restoring our depraved heart to one that has found freedom in Jesus Christ, that in the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, as we walk in the Spirit, to walk in newness of life, our new self created to be more like Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us now stand. As we praise God with the next song, let us return to Him His tithes and our free will offerings.
use our voices, Lord, use our hands, Lord, use our lives, dear yours, we are in offering. Oh, that we to be, we give to you, we give to you, we lift our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you, we are an offering. Lord, ye our hands, we lift our lives up to you, we are an offering. Lord, use our voices, Lord, use our hands, Lord, use our lives, they are yours, we are an offering. Say the offer tree sentence together. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven or earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The words of the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we spend some time to seek the Lord through our prayers. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's pray the collect together. The collect for today is the 18th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll now enter a time of intercession um, to pray for the deanery of Laos. The Thanksgiving and prayer pointers are found in the bulletin. Let us pray. 
Uh, Father, we thank you for your grace that, um, that the country of Laos, they, um, there's not that many COVID-19 cases. We thank you um, for your protection. And Lord, we also thank you how even during this very difficult time that your gospel can still be preached and still be um, shared to the people in Laos, that the ministry can still continue. We really pray and ask right now for your help um, as uh, our brothers and sisters are toiling and laboring uh, for the gospel uh, at Laos, that you would give them wisdom to know how to have new ways to teach English uh, and through the teaching uh, as a means to share um, the gospel of Jesus Christ um, and even creative ways to do so even virtually. Father, we ask and pray that um, truly um, the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few. We pray and ask that you will send your laborers to help um, uh, to reach um, those who are in Laos um, as there are many foreign teachers that are being pulled out of their agencies and they are being prevented from entering Laos during this time. So we ask, Lord, for your intervention. We ask, Lord, um, that you will send um, your laborers there. God, we also ask, Lord, that you would continue to um, provide for um, the finances and also the manpower to continue the work through the different language centers and also the different, um, the different ministries that are helping the vulnerable street children and also those that are training um, the people in Laos, uh, the vocational training. We really ask, Lord, that your spirit come to um, refresh them, those that are laboring there, and also to bring in new help and provision. So we thank you, Lord, for this is your work. We commit it into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give thanks to God together with a general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And give us, we pray, such a sense of all your mercies that our hearts may be unfaintly thankful and that we show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll now have a time of announcements. Welcome once again, uh, brothers and sisters, and those who are joining us online. Um, the first announcement is the consecration and enthronement service for Reverend Canon Dr. Titus Chung uh, as the 10th Bishop of Singapore. It will be held um, on 18th October, Sunday, 4 p.m., uh, live streamed. So uh, you can join in for the service and the, the link is in the bulletin. Next one, uh, we are uh, the Young Adults Ministry. We are going to have an outreach and uh, just with gathering all the young adults together virtually uh, for, a, for a session on how to manage your finances. So if you have anyone who um, uh, you, can, uh, you would like to invite uh, to, to join this fellowship, um, it's on Sunday, 18 October, 2 to 3 p.m. And um, there's a Google form to indicate if you can make it, and we will send the, the link um, nearer to the date. The Kids for Christ, they will be resuming the physical meetings from 14 November onwards on alternate Saturdays. So parents uh, do take note of that. And lastly, the Diocesan Day of Prayer and Fast, it will be held on 31st October, Saturday, 10.30 to 12, uh, live streamed online. Let us rise as we have the closing song.
and I say thanks for the things you have done for me. Things so undeserved, yet you give to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude all that I had and ever hoped to be. I owe it all to Thee, to God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory for the things He has done with His blood. He has saved me with His power. He has raised me to God be the glory for the things He has done. Just let me live my life. Let it be pleasing, Lord, to Thee. And should I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary. With His blood, He has saved me. With His power, He has raised me. To God be the glory for the things He Church, receive God's blessing. The peace of God which passes our understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. Now we Son Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Please be seated.